Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. I'm here today with Dominic Harvey, or Dom Harvey, I think he is more known as, uh, from the Edge radio station here in New Zealand. New Zealand. Um, welcome to my podcast. Hey, great to be here. Great to be here. I didn't hesitate in um, agreeing to, to meet up with you. I, I love podcasts and I love people that uh, go to their way and start doing it. Just to set some context, it took one comment on one of your tweets to get your attention. Oh yeah, one compliment, that's it. That'll get you a follow and then, yeah, sure, let's meet up. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I guess I'm keen to sort of ask, I guess the beginning question, you've been doing radio for uh, how many years? Uh, 26. Wow. Wowzers. Wowzer Rooney. Um, so how old were you when you started, dare I ask? Um, 17. Yeah, straight out of school. Wow, 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 17, wow, okay, I'm not going to do the maths, I'll do that later. Um, cool, so what was the passion for it, why, why radio, like why, I mean, I was keen to ask, like, why not stand-up comedy for Dom, like why, why radio, right, like what's the, what's the appeal of radio to you? Uh, when I was, um, my, my career sort of ended up a bit differently than what I imagined, um, when I was 12 we went on an um, intermediate field trip to the, the local radio station in Palmerston North, and uh, the guy that was on the air at the time, he was just sitting there with shorts and a t-shirt and jandals on, and I thought, and he was just like having a ciggy in the studio, just spinning you know, uh, LPs at the time, records, and I thought that's an amazing job, because up until that point all I'd, all I'd seen is my dad grizzling about work, putting a suit and tie on every morning, and heading out the door, and I, I had this perception of work as being something miserable that you're supposed to hate, and then I thought, should imagine doing a job where you can just like, you know, chill out and listen to music. Yeah, that's good. Good point. Absolutely. I guess I mean being in the radio business for twenty six years, like you've clearly seen the evolvement. Evolvement is it a word? Evolving. You know, yeah. technology has evolved, right? So, what? What? It, can, you, I mean, can you give us like a thumbnail sketch of what the changes have been? Like, I, it's a bit of a geeky question, I guess. But like, I'm just curious. Like, what is what has technology done to radio? Oh man, it's God. It's it's done um so much. Hey, eh? like the um. The, oh jeez, where, like, where do you start? Like, when I started, radio was uh, your radio announcers. It didn't actually have to do anything. You just had to sit back, and the music did the talking for you. Because this was in a time where there was like a half-hour TV show called RTR or Ready to Roll every every Saturday night, which played like half half an hour of music video clips. And that was all there was. There was no music channels. There was no internet. No anything like that. Um, so if you wanted to hear a new song, you heard it on the radio, and that was it. So the radio sort of had the upper hand. Nowadays, it's um. I mean, by the time a radio station gets a song on, if you're a super fan, you would have heard the song already. You know, the radio is no longer the home for new music, so it's become uh, more about it, sort of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm the kind of person when I li- when I do listen to the radio, like I, I tuned into the live um, stream the other day, and um, I-, I I wish you guys would talk longer. Like I'm more talk. I- obviously, it makes sense because I podcast, right? So I'm just like, why don't they talk longer? You know, like you know, we can choose. Me- I suppose there is that feeling now, obviously, with streaming and everything like that. It's like I can listen to music whenever I want. Like I just want to entertain. I want you know, uh, you know, especially you because you're yeah. hilarious, quite frankly. Um, when okay, here's a I get. When did you? Like, was there a point in your life growing up when you realised I'm a really funny kind of person? Like, I know that's a real weird question, but like, you're clearly funny and you know it. You're self-aware of your comedy. So like, did you tap into something in, at a certain point to, to sort of go, I can do something with this kind of thing? Not, not really. I mean, yeah, me and my granddad used to ask about because he was he was like a real funny guy. So we'd, we'd have we'd have jokes together, and I, I never I, I never had a problem at school, um, like getting myself in trouble if it was gonna if, if it was gonna get like. <laughs> like if it's gonna like get you know get me in trouble with the entire assembly or the entire class or whatever, if I was gonna get a laugh out of it, then I I never had a I never sort of had an issue with it. Yeah, it's so funny you literally articulate that. I was literally thinking on the way here. I was like, you seem to have this kind of mentality where if the end result is a laugh, it's worth it. Would that be fair yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, in the last couple of years, you know, I've, I've um, been involved in some. Um, Controversies and things. <laughs> can we like do? Can we do like a th- give us the highlights? Like, get, wh- wh- what was your first big like? Holy shit! I'm making a difference in the media. Like, give us a thumbnail sketch of of the the antics of Dom. Well, yeah, the first one, the first one was probably uh, well, the first major one anyway was probably about uh, six or seven years ago. We used to do this thing um, called Hug a Ginger Day once a year. Oh, God, I remember that. Yeah, cause, and it sort of came off, because um, there was an episode of uh, South Park where they did like a thing called Kick a Ginger. Oh, right. Was this the, sorry to jump in here, was this the, like, the, the riff on that video, ki- that kid on YouTube, the Ginger Got Soul kid? <laughs> Ginger, Ginger's have soul. He, he literally retweeted me the other day, like, I, I'm trying to get him on my podcast, 
It's funny, it's hilarious, because he's kind of connected with Gavin McInnes, and Gavin McInnes had him on his show, and it was amazing. He yeah. just, it was incredible. He, uh, there's kind of theories that he's actually a troll. Like, no one knows if he's, like, legit or not. Like, he pretends to be the social justice warrior, feminist kind of white knight. It's insane, it's insane. But, you know, sorry, carry on, sorry. Yes, so um, it's after the South Park episode of yeah, Kicker King Day, we were like, you know, that's, that's really uncool. So we started, like, the... Um, the opposite version of it, Hugger Ginger, where if, if you've got a, got a ginger maid or whatever. I'm going to start a German again because I'm literally remembering my friends getting offended at this. Like my friend who's now married to a girl who is ginger um, was literally offended at this. And I'm like, the irony of the fact that you did it to counter something angry or hateful and they still get offended at that is... The, the, yeah. the, it's incredible. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the the, the, um, the argument that some people have was, uh, well, why are you even, you know, by by mentioning them, you're singling singling them out, and you, you, why do they need to be hugged? They don't need to be. Let's what, never talk about minorities ever. Yeah, so, so that ended up being um being something that was um was on uh what was close up at the time with Mark Sainsbury. Ended up on that, you know, a couple of nights in a row. But uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny that you say this, I this yeah. So, so what was next? What was the next? Uh, so what was next? What was the next, uh, the next Dom scandal that came out? Oh, I can't, I can't even remember exactly. What are some of the highlights? What are the ones that stick out? Oh, well, there was there was an episode of X Factor where these um these these two girls got up and did like a a, a rap routine, uh, and I, and I um and I tweeted something, something like um uh you know g- girls rapping hardly ever a good idea, and that became like a big um sexist feminism thing, which. Which it was I mean, it wasn't my intention. It was pointing out that these girls. It was like it was a terrible act, and they didn't get through, and you know whatever. And 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 if you look at the best rappers of all time, if you look at it, like a New Musical Express list or anything, out of the top 100, this they may have one or two females in there. It's just it's a, a male-dominated genre. But that yeah, became a big. It was. Um, I don't know how much you do or don't want to say about it, but there was a controversial tweet of yours to do with a reference to the movie Once Were Warriors. I don't know if you know what I'm alluding to. Oh, yeah. yeah, there, yeah. There was, what was the... I mean, that was quite a serious one. Like, I'm curious to ask, because, you know, when something like that happens, you can get the backlash from that. Um, and people can Google it if you don't want to talk about it. That's fine. Um, that's kind of a serious... Like, do you have these moments where you, like, kind of went too far there? Or, like, do you sort of think that or not? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I mean, my... um. <laughs> I, I mean, like, where, where, where possible, like, I'll, I'll be the butt of my own joke, you know, and I'm, I'm, and I'm cool with that. And the, the last thing I want, ever really want to do, is um, like upset or hurt yeah. a person. And it, I actually don't, don't go to my way to offend people. But <laughs> no, no, I totally do believe because I'm the kind of person as well. Like um, this guy, as I say, I, I don't know if you want to get this guy. Did you write about her? I mean, me, mentioned he, you know, writeabout.com and Milo and all that kind of stuff going on. I'm talking about this so much on my podcast because it's such a huge discussion but but Andrew Robert famously famously said and I, I identify this as well he says I only have two modes right he says jocularity and righteous indignation you know so he's either just taking the piss out of everyone else and himself or he's just like really pissed about something serious yeah. are you ever like do you have a is there another side to you like do you, are you would you say that or no how do, how do you mean another like, side what like, do you mean I mean when I say like is there a counter to the like the taking the piss out of yourself is obviously like, are you like this all the time? Was my question. No, I suppose I'm. Um, I, I don't. Know, I don't know. Like, because I do a radio show, you know, I've got, got like quite a big platform, five mornings a week, and so um, outside of work, I'm yeah, I'm just quite quiet and reserved. I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, you get sort of like if I'm out with friends, or whatever. I don't feel the need to sort of be the centre of attention or anything like that. <laughs> I quite happily just sort of sit back and observe a little bit. Yeah, and I suppose that makes sense given your work because you, you know, to be a sort of a social observer would make sense, right? To, to sort of be clued in on what's going on. It's interesting. I, I, I've heard that and seen that a lot with people in the public. Like, ironically, some of them are quite shy, right? And it's quite funny. It's really, and people don't seem to understand it. I, 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 you know, as I say, with some of the people I've connected with, I totally do get that, you know? So um, there was one thing I came out across on Google, was, which uh, was it called Crot- Crotchgate? The, was it the oh, dancing yeah, with the. Yeah. Yeah. What was that about? What was. <laughs> Well, it was just um, th- there was um, the, the the contestant who was the villain in the first series of the ba- the Bachelor here, this this, this uh, lady called Crystal. She was in, on Dancing with the Stars, and uh, she was she's doing really well too. I think she finished like second or third. She did, she did fantastic, and uh, just in one of the dancers in the final episode, her dance partner like picked her up, so she was doing the splits mid air, and and uh, you know the skirt went right up, and you could see her, see her pants. And I took a screen cap off the TV, and uh, the the caption was. Um, 
something like um, Crystal uh, just giving Art a glimpse of what he missed out on, and Art, Art was the guy that, sh- that you know turned her down on The Bachelor. Um, yeah, and that, and that, that became a, a, a big thing. But the the morning after I tweeted it, and we just should we wait for the motorbike? Um, the morning after I tweeted it, I, I heard that she was upset about it, so I reached out to her and apologised, and she and and you know removed the tweet. She said, "I I don't accept your apology," and. And, and then it kind of blew up, but it's like, I, I really was apologetic, like it wasn't my intention to, you know, to be, na- I was just trying to be funny, I wasn't trying to be nasty. That's right, I can, I can hear it. Um, no, no, that's interesting, it's funny, um, there seems to be this culture, and I, I'll be keen to know, I mean obviously, you know, I was explaining this sort of stuff to you off here, um, about Milo Yiannopoulos and all this kind of stuff, there seems to be this sort of outrage culture, right, where people... I mean, there's this term, social justice warriors, right? Where these these people that are looking for reasons to be offended. Like, do you would you resonate with that? Do you do you re, do you witness that sort of in New Zealand at all? Oh God, yeah. And I, I think it's got kind of I think it's got kind of worse in a way with um with uh, social media. Uh, and a lot of it is um a lot of it is uh, what I'd call a shouting minority. It's just like a couple of people that are almost like scrolling through their Twitter feed, looking for something to be outraged by every, each each day. Um, and then there's uh, like band, bandwagon jumpers, so that you just jump jump on a cause to be outraged by something. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it, uh, and it keeps it interesting. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, it, um, yeah, people who are offended think that their opinion is more valid or more valuable. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. This is what I'm realizing, and I think you'll resonate with this immediately. Is that victim has become the new currency, right? Victim is the new currency. It's it's literally. I spoke to this girl called Lauren Southern about this. She's a sort of a young um, Canadian political sort of activist, right? And um, she said you go onto these sort of Twitter profiles and they list these like I'm autistic and I'm bipolar, and they're literally like giving a CV of their like victim narrative and it's it's really disempowering it's really horrible right and I think this is why you need to keep doing what you're doing quite frankly because and as I said to you I think there is a, a needed conversation in New Zealand about free speech quite frankly and this is what I'm trying to do right so um, most of my listeners because I get stats and stuff like that most of my like 70% of people listen to my podcast are like outside New Zealand like states right and, and things like that so Obviously, things like your, you know, the Edge Radio stations online, anyone can can listen to. It. What has that done? Like, I mean, opening up the world. Like, I mean, t- does that like? Do you, are you getting like interaction all the time with people outside New Zealand through the radio and things like that? Or yeah, you, you do, but you find it's mainly it's mainly like New Zealanders overseas that are listening. That's a that's the funny thing about it. Like when um when when podcasts first started coming on. And I'd listen to some of my favourite radio shows and you know, radio stations like from around the world. I was, as a New Zealand broadcaster, I was, I was a little bit spooked because it's sort of like, fuck, you know, why are people going to listen to this when they can listen to, you know, Ryan Seacrest or, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever, t- take yeah. your pick. But I don't know, I think people, when it comes to radio, people tend to like to listen to what makes them feel like home, I guess. Yeah, of course. It's so, right? so it's, yeah. It's, yeah, of course, that makes total sense. I think, um, to just wrap up, I think they're, 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 I was sort of thinking, like, obviously you're in radio, I'm podcasting. It's a completely different world, right, in a way. In a way, I suppose, you know, um, podcasts are like... Oh, <laughs> <that's good. laughs> like, podcasting is, like, on demand and everything like that, and radio is not. And I think there is still... Like, radio is very much still alive, right? Like, it's oh, not... Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think as long as there's, um, like, traffic problems in the major cities, um, then, yeah, radio will still be alive. Because, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't watch Netflix on your tablet while you're yeah. driving to work. You say you're sort of stuck with radio, really. Yeah, no, it's cool. Well, awesome. I guess one only. Thank you so much, Dom. That's been amazing to connect with you. Um, yeah, so well, do you want to give maybe a couple of social media link thing? Like, where's your, what's your Twitter handle? Um, just at Dom Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what about you? Do you want to you want to be a broadcaster or you want to just I do. I do. I do. Oh, are we still, do you want to oh, yeah, yeah. oh, cool, cool, cool. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. All right. Yeah, I, I sort of am, um, I, I kind of, well, okay, so my podcast has an element of sort of faith and spirituality because I grew up very religious. I grew up Christian, right? So um, my whole kind of conversation is this evolving kind of like deconstruction of all the stuff I was handed. It's like really interesting space for conversation, right? So I sort of am in this place at the moment where I want to essentially do what this guy Milo is doing for kind of politics and gaming and feminism and all this kind of stuff for the religious world. Like I sort of want to do this religious journalism sort of thing. And I actually connected with a girl named Kathleen Falsani. She's like friends with Bono. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. I, well, yeah, just, I, I spoke to this guy, Rob Bell. He like, he's a 
he started a church essentially in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that grew to like 10,000 very quickly. And he sits down with Oprah. He went on the speaking tour with like Oprah and Elizabeth Gilbert, and it's insane, it's insane. And he, he's like, like I talked to a whole bunch of people that know him, so I sort of built to this place where I got this connection, and it was like incredible. It's just incredible. So, um, it is kind of, I, I do say this unapologetically, my podcast is kind of therapy, right? It's kind of like just figuring some shit out, out loud sort of a thing. So I, I, that's what I want to do. And um, yeah, I've got some crazy, like I've actually got a book idea in my head to do with like social justice warriors and stuff. So I want to do this book called Social Justice Warriors, but like worrying, like don't worry, you know, like don't, don't just don't worry, like relax, you know, <laughs> sorry, yeah. stop worrying. Like, yeah. So I've actually, I actually pitched this idea to this girl and she actually thinks it's a great idea. So it's amazing. So I'm trying to just figure this out and I'm so, I know you've actually written a couple of books as well, right? So, you know, I, maybe I'll pick your brain off here, but um, I guess we'll just wind down here because I don't really